This is my Anycubic i3 Mega 3D printer. It's it's a budget 3D printer that I think I only paid about $250 for at the time. Um, this is an older revision too. Uh, they've made some nice quality of life improvements over it over the years, but it's it's a very entry level printer, but it does print quite well. Um, I haven't had any real complaints with it other than that it doesn't have automatic bed leveling on it. Um, as you can see, I pan down here. You gotta do the little knobs yourself. Um, there is a custom firmware that I'm gonna try in a little bit to see. They have a manual zone bed leveling, which is a little bit better, but uh, either way, it, it prints fairly well, and for $200, it, it, I mostly use it for utilitarian type of stuff where I'll just print out, like, oh, this washer broke or something, and I'll print out something that you can't buy. Um, and it's been really good for that. I'm not really into the, the modeling where you make a very intricate piece of artwork and you paint it. No, I just, I need a part, I print it. But, this video stemmed from, I wasn't going to make a video on it, this SD card reader that's in it. I already took this thing apart, I wasn't going to make a video. The SD card reader has always been very bad on at least my particular revision. Um, whenever I've inserted an SD card, I just sort of, I have to wiggle it around and then it'll sometimes read and I've had it just fail because I can't read the SD card anymore. Um, so I don't, I haven't even really been using the SD card. I've just been using Octoprint on the USB, which it supports. Um, but it would be nice to have the SD card. So I took it apart, um, desoldered it and ordered another one. But then I was really, when I was digging around for other information on this printer, it seems there's quite a lot of modifications. Like I was saying, there's a firmware update that lets you do, um, heat zone bed leveling, which I might try. Um, you can do just a normal knock to a fan, which I purchased here, and you can put in drive motors, the controllers for the drive motors. So when I bought this, it's extremely loud, and I just assumed that, well, you could replace the fan maybe, but I don't really care too much. I just assumed the stepper motors were loud, but apparently it's actually the controller that's making them loud, and from some videos I've seen, it's supposed to improve it. So I bought all that. I have the fan, I have the controllers, and we're going to go through it. So enough talk, let's get to it. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is the fan, because that seems like the easiest. So let me pull up a chair here. Um, it seems like what I have to do is just take apart this heat shroud. It's not like a heat shroud, this protective cover. Um, I don't know what screws to disassemble, and I haven't really looked into it too much. So I'm just going to go for it here and take it apart to the best that I can. And I'll fast forward when this inevitably gets too boring. Looks like the other screws are on the back side, so I'm just going to rotate this thing around. On the back. Uh, you can kind of see it a little bit back there. And I'm just going to take these four. There's one, two at the bottom, and two at the top here. I'm just going to try to take those out um, without taking any of the other ones out. I just want to take off the cover, um, not the, the bearings or, or the belt, anything like that. I don't really want to have to retension the belt. Not something I really want to be bothered doing right now. So, good choice. It looks like it's the bottom two screws there. And what I love about this 3D printer is all the screws are the same except for a few. Like the main chassis screws, all the same. So you just, you don't even need to worry about it. Okay, so that looks like that took care of that. So that's just the back bottom two for your reference there. Again, they might have revised this. And the top ones, top two right there, and that takes off the front. Okay, yeah, that looks about right. So I'm going to unplug both fans here so we can get a better look at it and go from there. Okay, so let's get the whole printer out of the way for now because I don't think we'll need that. Okay, so it looks like as though I need a pair of pliers and the same Allen here. Oh, it's not in there too tight, so I can just do this by hand. That will work for me. And again, this is more taking screws out, so I think you get the idea. Four screws. Can you see that all right? Four screws to take out the fan. Make sure you don't lose these. They look like different sizes, but the same hex. So it looks like Noctua have provided a little adapter, but it's actually still not quite the right size. Don't know if you can see that there. Um, so, what I'm going to do is we're still going to have to desolder it, plus this wire would be way too long even with the adapter. 
So we're going to desolder this wire here. I'm going to peel the label back. Luckily for me, this one can be desoldered, which is nice. Um, but the Noctua, I know for a fact, they hide the cables under the badge. Like, they, they hide it under the plastic. So we can't get to those, sadly. So we're going to have to splice them in somewhere up here, which makes it a little bit long, more annoying, but that's okay. So I decided I didn't want to splice the wire. I really just didn't want to use that ugly heat shrink on this, so I just nipped off a little bit of that right there. And I'm just gonna desolder it that way. We'll go from there. Let's see what we can get going here. Okay, so with the fan modified, now I just need to screw it back into place here like this. Now, originally there were some rubber washers here, but the Nocturne one comes with a little extra space there anyways, so I'm not going to put those back in because I think it'll be too much space. Um, so I'm just going to put one of these guys in. And it looks like it's a perfect one for one match we got here, perfect 40 millimeter, so pretty good. Um, so here we go, I'm just going to put that bolt in, and this is a really simple way to just step down some of the noise that this thing makes. The stepper motor one I would say is probably a bit more extreme, but we're going to do that here in just a second too. Okay, I'm going to plug it back in, but I'm not going to screw it back in yet. I want to make sure that it actually works. Um, so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to plug it back into the same sockets, obviously, so no errors or anything are reported. I don't think it would be even able to tell. There's no sense anymore for <laughs> um, whether the fan's turning or not, but we'll see. And I'm just going to plug it in here. I don't normally plug it in on this desk, so excuse the fumbling. Where is it? Okay, and... Now I'm going to do a preheat for PLA, and that should immediately kick on the fans pretty soon, like once we get into the 100 degrees or so. Let me zoom in a little bit further. Okay, so the power supply fan is kicked on. So that's good. I've also replaced the power supply, or not the power supply, the mainboard fan on this as well with a Corsair one a long time ago but again no video on that oh is the fan spinning I can't tell okay the motherboard fan has turned off I just want to demonstrate how quiet this fan is that's quiet again I think it's running at 70% though not 100 but still let's do a little comparison I'll cut back to the other audio And I know that audio is with it printing, but we'll do a full comparison at the end of a print as well. Okay, now here's the whole thing on its side. So we're going to do the controllers. Now that we've got it all buttoned up, we're going to take out the bottom panel um, 
and do the controllers. And there's, yeah, obviously this is not a stock fan. That's another thing I recommend changing out is this fan. Again, wasn't a video on that. But anyways, you got to take out um, the perimeter screws here. So these all the way around the side, and that'll let it come off. You'll see in just a second. Let me start on that, and then we'll cut, and it'll be completely removed like this. Um, I like to remove the cable harness. I know most people actually like to remove the whole arm. I can't be bothered. So I just remove the cable harness. Fan all around. Now my fan, because it's a modified Corsair fan, is stuck in there. So I gotta unplug it to keep the fan or the panel off with the fan. There we go. And now I can take the panel away. But now we're inside. And if you're looking, these red things with the little heat sinks are what we're going to replace. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to disconnect all of the motor controllers. Well, I don't know which ones are which, so I'm going to label them so that I don't forget. I'm sure I'm going to find some really easy labeling convention that they've used. But in case I don't, then I will just tape on some labels here and that'll be good enough for me. These have been a real pain in the ass to get out, I gotta say. I'm not sure what kind of technique. I'm sure there's like a chip puller I've seen before, but if you don't got one, make sure you're not jamming on the capacitors. That's my only recommendation here. You're going to either side. I don't really care if I'm bending the pins right now, so I'm using a screwdriver. But yeah, make sure you're not really messing with those capacitors. Okay, so a couple things I noticed with the new one. A, we've got some pins I gotta get rid of that are sticking up. Mine says version 3 on here somewhere, which is kind of undocumented because all the ones I've seen say version 2 at most. I don't know. Most of the pins line, most of the pins line up here. Um, if you look, because you have to think of it inverted here for flipping it over. Uh, ground. These A and B pins are all messed up. IO, ground. MS1 lines up to the transmit and receive. Everything lines up except for the A pins, which is a bit concerning. So I think version 3, I know that they say that it's like it's backwards when you do this, but they say version 2 isn't backwards. So is version 3 backwards? This is like a one-off brand. I'll have to see. I'll be very cautious with this. But point is, I got a desolder these two here because these are just I don't know why they included those so I got to get the desoldering gun do that I'm gonna do it off camera and I'll get right back to you okay so now we're getting into the more dangerous territory I've got these all plugged in and we're just gonna be probing the potentiometer with the negative here it's the top of it and either of these two points here um, and seeing what voltage we get with this uh, printer I was reading you're supposed to get 0.85 thereabouts. Um, another technique you can do is you can put an alligator clip onto the screwdriver itself, um, right, and then you could get like a dynamic measurement. I don't trust these alligator clips that I have to not be hundreds of ohms somehow, so I'm just going to be doing it slowly. i can probably do it off camera, but I'll give you a rough idea. So I'll power it on, and I've got my voltmeter set to voltage DC. It's out of focus, but that's okay. And I'm just going to probe these right here. And this one's 2.4. And this one, half a volt. One volt. 0.9. And lastly, 1.7. So it's a little bit all over the place. We'll have to adjust those in just a sec here. Um, yeah, so... You're going to tweak those up. As you can see, that's quite sensitive. So if I tune this even just a little bit, I'm going to get a completely different voltage now. 2.2. So it's got a ways to go. Okay, I'm back. It's been a little while. Um, I looked up more resources and guides on doing this for this particular printer, and um, I found that I was misquoting the voltage. The 0 0.85 that I was quoting originally is for the original controllers. Um, 
So instead, what you'll actually do when you do the calculation is you'll come to about 1.06. I got them pretty close. This is a 0 0.06, 0 0.06, 0 0.4, 0 0.4, something like that. Um, but what I also did was I wasted an hour in usual fashion, as I'll do sometimes. Um, as you'll see, these connectors are kind of a custom wire here. Um, I thought that I would need to reverse them, which is simple enough. Um, but when I looked at mine, all of it's messed up. So with mine, um, they're recommending like, oh, A1 will be switched around. No, mine was different. I had like A where B was labeled on here. The labels are completely wrong. It's just reversed as well. And I don't know if that's because I've got like a knockoff that I found for cheap. Um, but yeah, the labels mean nothing on mine. I just flipped it. Um, so I did a bunch of planning and then the drives ended up making a weird noise anyways. I flipped the power immediately, just made it so that they were reversed like they recommended. Worked fine. So <laughs> let's reassemble it. I'm going to manage the cables and I'll get back to you. Okay, so here we are again in the same spot, about the same distance away. And this is with the new controller and the new fan. Camera will probably noise neutralize, so it might sound the same volume, but uh, it's significantly quieter in person. And I'll just give you, I'll stop talking. So yeah, um, all that I'm going to do next, if you saw on the bottom that fan was kind of weirdly placed, I don't trust it to sort of keep the heat down well enough, I'm sure it's fine. So I'm printing out a fan mount, we're going to mount that, we're going to finish the SD card mount, and we're calling this a finished sort of project. <laughs> Alrighty. So as you can see, we're printing over the SD card. It showed up right away when I plugged it in, so it really was just a slot that needed to be replaced. Um, that's all I originally intended to fix on this printer, but we ended up making the whole thing seven times something, or rather quieter. I didn't actually measure it on a decibel scale, but um, yeah, I hope you find this somewhat useful. We'll see you next time.